Okay, so I'm making my way out to Queen Creek to check out Coach Jeffries and his Benjamin Franklin Chargers. Shout out to my boy uh, Andy Laperta over at County Line Preps. The sideline vlog, the Thursday throwdown vlog, uh, we're combining it into one this week. I'm gonna try to check in with Ralph right now. Yeah. So tell me, what do I need to know besides the obvious Zach attack, Zach Jeffries versus the freezer, Ralph Frias? Safford is a really, really tough bunch. The defensive line, Bailey Sanford, those guys, they really get after it. Um, it really depends on whether Manuel Aparicio, the quarterback for Safford, is healthy or not. Benjamin Franklin, they run the ball. Chandler Miles, Zach Jeffries, and they're gonna try to run the ball 40, 45 times. I mean, if Stafford can't stop that, it's over. We're combining the Thursday throwdown vlog and the sideline vlog into one this week because I'm going to be absent tomorrow night. Is there any word on Jacob Conover? Is he playing? I believe so. If he's not, Billy Bolger's going to be ready. He's got three starts under his belt now, and he looks good to go. Yeah, Billy Bolger is probably one of the most slept-on uh, quarterbacks in the state right now. That's really how I feel. So I'm hoping that he gets some offers. Anyways, I got to stop. Go get some ice, because you already know. A lot of more life. Hey, so I got I to get that water, because I'm going all the way out to Queen Creek. So we'll be live tweeting. All right, enjoy yourself, man. I made it to Benjamin Franklin High School. Uh, make sure that you subscribe, uh, comment, smash that like button. Let me know, uh, you know, what else you want to see? I don't know, maybe I should start like eating the food at these games or whatever. I got my predict twin segment going on. What do you think? What's going to happen tonight? I got Benjamin Franklin at home quite comfortably. I think it's going to be a lot of sweeps but and I've, tosses. I've wanted to watch this O-line. Supposedly best tackle in the state. He Ralph was, Frias. He was. I the freezer. Won. I saw him on, on top of one list. I call him the freezer. So I like that. Cause, Almost cause, as good as 300 M. Yeah. <laughs> good. Benjamin Franklin, 6-1. Stafford is 3-4. and four. Okay. Benjamin Franklin dominated this game last year. I'm almost 90% sure that Eric Sorensen is here to see one person, and that would be Ralph Frias. You can't the, miss him, Chili. See the, number 77? The, the freezer. Division 1 college the freezer. lineman right there. The freezer, Ralph Frias. And he's... Got some offers out there, New Mexico State, UCF, UNLV. San Diego uh, State. Okay. And UMass. Yes, UMass. Like, Kids got grades, got Dartmouth offer. If you're good, they'll find you. Oh, no kidding. No if you're kidding. good, they'll find you. And thanks know, to people I, like I 360E over here, like, they will find you. Chili, I know they you're big on you. sleepers. And yeah. you're going to be hard-pressed to find a bigger sleeper than Ralph Frias. And don't give me the excuse he only plays at a 3A level. No, hey, he's got a nickname. He's not really a sleeper to me. He's, he's not really a sleeper to me. I, he's he's going to go play somewhere Division One. Hopefully he'll stay home, no uh, play at ASU. What are you expecting to see tonight? I think Ben Franklin's going to win this game. They're a okay. better team. They've, they're on a six-game win streak. I think their last loss was week zero. They're just a very disciplined team under Coach Jeffrey. So... Safford is, uh, from what I've seen, they've been kind of up and down. They're always right around 500. Colin Thompson, class of 2020, Safford Bulldog. Shout out to the sideline vlog. and my favorite player is Chandler Miles. My name is Kayla Garvin and my favorite player is Seth Hamblin. Savannah Martinez and my favorite player is Zach Jeffries.
So at the end of one, it is uh, 12 to nothing, Benjamin Franklin High School. What do you see out there? I see a lot of uh, Ralph Brees dominating on the line. Right now, the Chargers are doing a great job offensively, using misdirection. They have incredible, they have two backs that are just absolutely incredible, and a very athletic line. And on defense, they are getting after it. Already a pick six Chargers defense here. And right now it's 13-0, and Benjamin Franklin is rolling. It is halftime now, and Benjamin Franklin leads 18 to nothing. This is what I see. Benjamin Franklin, they are a great team. Have an offense that's a tight scrum. They don't turn over the football. Uh, they really do a good well of clock management. You've talked about the two running backs they have. Right, great, Chandler Miles, Zach Jeffries. They have an offensive line that really gets after it. They pull both guards and tackles on a lot of misdirection counter plays. They do a great job on offense. The only team that can contain Benjamin Franklin is Benjamin Franklin because it seems like Seth Hamlin is doing the job of containing the Zach attack. Seth Hamlin, he already has two touchdowns. He has a pick six in this game, also a, a returned block punt for a touchdown. And I got a name of the year nomination here, McAllister Loving. Also making huge plays a couple AKA sets. AKA McLovin. <laughs> Mc We're Lovin. calling him yeah. McLovin. With uh, Skiba, McLovin like you want to call him. <laughs> These guys are all over the field defensively, blocking gaps and they're doing a really good job defensively. This field though, real quick, yeah. not to change the topic, <laughs> but this field is absolutely remarkable. The first thing I noticed, it's really easy to cut on. Really easy to cut on. Making some moves here. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Taking it back to the glory here. The sideline blog, ArizonaVarsity.com. But this is the football field that I'm talking about. It is absolutely amazing. This is absolutely one of the most beautiful football. Ben Franklin is uh, dominating on the defense side of the football. I've got Safford for just 71 yards of offense in the first half. Are you, are you surprised? Safford gets a little bit one-dimensional without Parisio at quarterback. Okay. And so I think Ben Franklin's got their number. If, if they can figure out a way to get outside and get somebody else the football, they got a little bit of a chance. But they're not out of it. It's only 18 nothing at halftime. So you play that bad in the first half and only be down 18, I think they're okay where they're at. Tell me something that we don't know about the freezer, Ralph Frias. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the kid was the anchor on the 4x100 relay team as an Stop. eighth grader. He was. Legendary Lee Patterson <laughs> Legendary. covering Thanks, the man. Stafford Bulldogs, <laughs> traveling all around. So we're kicking off the second half, and Benjamin Franklin is going to take the kickoff. I think we're going to see the Zach attack in the second half. Midway through the third quarter, my boy finally decides to show up and hold up his end of uh, the deal that if you show up, I will come out to this Benjamin Franklin Sa Safford game. I see that Ben Franklin's handling business here tonight with Safford. Kind of what you expected. Kind of what I expected. Zach Jeffries, I'm sure, and Chandler Miles going off for the Chargers, I assume. Actually, it has been the Seth Hamblin show. Seth Hamblin? Yeah. Scoop and score for a touchdown, interception for a touchdown. He is the only person that can contain what I'm calling the Zach attack. Well, the Chargers defense shut out. Santan Puddles. I knew the Chargers defense could bring it, especially after last week's performance. So I guess in a way I'm not surprised about tonight. Do you think that this Benjamin Franklin team could compete with Seton this year at six and one right now, about to dispose of Safford? Well, I'll tell you this. And this is one of the biggest uh, line on both sides that you're gonna see from Safford. Spoke to Coach Edwards at ALA. He thought Safford would give Ben Franklin a game 
They haven't, obviously, so far. So what's that say about the Chargers? I think that answers the question. It's pretty, they're pretty darn good. Pretty they might good. be better than them Chargers from LA, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely putting up more points. Yeah, so I'm just sure. gonna... So at the end of three, it's 24 to nothing. This Benjamin Franklin team, uh, they were on the goal line, got stopped. That's just a fantastic stop by the Bulldogs of Safford there, down on the goal line, really tightening up. But also, uh, at the end of the day, they got to get something going offensively here, Chile. I'm kind of stunned that they're not able to, you know, kind of run up the middle and control the interior running game while they are on offense. And I, I have to give it to Ben Franklin on defense. They are stopping Apricio, who is a great dual threat quarterback uh, for Safford, and they are containing him. Offensively, going in the second half, they only had they only had 71 yards total offense. Well, we're going to catch this fourth quarter, and this game is rolling along because this is two power running teams. It is uncrustable time. How do you use your uncrustables? <laughs> Only takes me about four or five bites. It's such a good. <laughs> hey, talk about the the snack of champions right there, chili. That's all you need. So, do you guys have any uncrustable recipes? Uh, Brett Quintine actually microwaves his. So there's about 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Safford finds their way into the end zone on a short run by uh, alternate quarterback, uh, Jay Arbizo. Um, scores 38 to eight. I think it's a little bit too little too late. Uh, what, what did you see this game? I got three names for you. All Benjamin Franklin defensive <laughs> players here. Benjamin Franklin doesn't count. <laughs> Pal Skiba, Seth Hamlin, and of course the name. The name McAllister Lovin. What a name. All three players. This defensive team that really impressed me from Ben Franklin. And they came out punching him right in the mouth. Zach Jeffries, you know, we talked about him in the, the Zach game. attack. The, the Zach, Zach attack. attack. And he just surpassed a thousand yards rushing on the year and add that to three touchdowns on a great performance. Really impressed from this Ben Benjamin Franklin team who now moves to seven to one in that three A. What, what kind of damage do you think uh, this Benjamin Franklin team is going to do in the playoffs? Well, I think they're a, a legitimate threat. They play fantastic defense, and they control the clock. That's very important. Yeah, obviously, uh, th this team is primed for the playoffs. They don't throw much, so, you know, I'm kind of curious what's going to happen when a team is able to effectively uh, stack the box. But, yo, if Safford can't stack the box against this team, I, I just don't know who can. Man, I'm going to try to catch up with uh, the freezer, Ralph Prius, in a minute. The game is over, so I'm going to let my man do his work. I'm going to do mine. We'll check back in later. How's it going? Ralph Prius, Safford High School. You know, I know it's not the outcome that you wanted. Uh, what have been some of the struggles this season? 
You know what? It's just like um, coming together. I mean, like, yeah, we'll have our ups and downs. You know, we'll dog on each other, but you know, we just need to quit that and just be positive most of the time. And you expect it to start coming together now that playoff time is rolling around? Um, yeah, I think it hit our guys pretty hard. It hit me pretty hard. You know, we're all upset, but um, yeah, you know, I think it kind of hit them. So I mean, you know, it's just from here on up and going. You're proof that if you're good, they'll find you. You got the offers from UNLV, you got the offers from San Diego State, New Mexico State. I saw UMass just came up. Anything that you're looking for in particular? Um, honestly, just, I mean, a school that just like, you know, gets my best interest and, you know, just somewhere I could just, you know, call, call people home? my brothers, you know, call okay. home, you know. How far has your team progressed since the early loss to ALA? Well, I've said this before, I don't know that we've, I mean, we're, we're playing great. ALA is a really, really good team. And we actually played really well. I know the score didn't show it, but we uh, we played really well in that game. I really think every game this year so far has been has been good. We just didn't have a, the right outcome in that first one. Um, our kids have stepped up. Um, Safford's a great football team. Their record's not great, but they're, they're not a bad team. Um, they've had a tough schedule, and uh, I'm just proud of the kids. And I'm really proud of how far we've come in the last two years. Now, was there anything that surprised you about this Sapper team that they did or didn't do? No, I mean, they, they've got a few playmakers and they tried to utilize them defensively. I just, we, we did a great job. Um, we did a great job. We shut them down. They really scored you know, at the very end, but, uh, but uh, geez, I mean, uh, our kids stepped up and made plays and I just, defensively, uh, we got a score. And then on, uh, on a punt, block we got a score so two scores it really builds on offense because we struggled on offense in the first half. All right now I've been saying the whole week I was wondering how Safford was going to contain what I am calling the Zach attack offense. Um, it seemed like the only person that could contain him was uh, early on Seth Hamlin you know scored those two touchdowns right. and kept, kept your Zach attack off the field. You know how do you slow this team down if you were coaching against your own Chargers? Well I, I'm proud of Zach and Chandler too. Uh, Chandler Miles on the other wing um, but we call it thunder and lightning, Zach's a thunder, Chandler's a lightning. But ultimately, it's the offensive line and the tight ends open things up. We've seen it on film time and time again where it just, it opens up wide um, and, and probably anybody can run through there. But I, yeah, I love my son Zach, he's a good one. So. I'm glad you brought up offensive line. Can you, can you give me one thing about Jordan Kemp? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? It's not one word, but just team player. Team player for doing what he's done. And Made the uh, transition from tight end to, to O-line. But all those guys up front, um, just week in and week out, get it done. And, uh, you know, there's no glory in it, but uh, they love it. They eat it up, and they uh, I'm proud of them. They're great kids. But you made these two touchdowns early on. Walk me through the first one. By the interception? Yeah. yeah. So we wrapped that play in practice. We knew the quarterback was going to give the play action. And I saw the guy go out on the arrow, and my coach told me, just jump it. And that's what I did. And, and you fully stiff arm two Sapper players on your way. Yeah, I, I got all that on video. It's going to be on the blog, I promise. Uh, yeah. Now, the matchup with Big Ralph Reese, the freezer, all game. How tough was that? <laughs> when he would pull, we, we knew he was going to he was gonna come around, and he was going to be a big wall in our way. But we knew we just had to get around him and try to work our way around him. Just use our speed against them, and I think it worked pretty well, and we made some good plays off of it. Seven and one now. How far in the rearview mirror is that ALA game? It's pretty far. We look forward to seeing them in the playoffs. We get the chance, but we'll just have to see when we get there. We try to, we got two more games left. Gotta gotta finish those out. So the only thing better than one Jeffrey is two Jeffreys. I want to congratulate you unofficially, thousand yard rusher. Well, what's what's that feeling like? Feels good. I mean, a sophomore thousand yards. I mean, that's big, and I just gotta keep going from here. I can't get my head big and stuff. Seven on sevens. I mean, let's go. I mean, we'll show them up. <laughs> that's an open challenge. So you, you yeah. guys totally are. You guys oh, yeah. are willing to take on anybody. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, talk to me about your backfield mate, Chandler Miles. What's something that you got to say about him? We try not to get like competitive with each other, but like just push each other harder and harder. Okay. Jordan Kemp. What do you have to say about him? He's a he's a great tight end, wide receiver for you guys, and sacrificed and went to the line. He's starting. He's now blocking for you. Yeah. No, I love Jordan Kemp. I mean, uh, he's a he's a great guy, and uh, I think making the uh, self move and moving the whole line. You got fans. You got fans. Awesome.
tell me something about Seth Hamlin because he seemed to be the only guy that could keep you out of the end zone when he stole your two touchdowns yeah. early on. Oh, no, it's good, it's good. He's a great, he's a great defensive player, and uh, he's he's probably one of our best. And uh, he just got it done out there, blocked that punt and stuff, and took took that for a touchdown. He's a great player. Do you think that uh, <laughs> this team is ready for a rematch with AOA? They're getting there. They're uh, ALA. I just watched them play for a few minutes, and they ran it up over there. But uh, yeah, in a few minutes they put on 44 points. So yeah, they're, it's gonna be a, uh, it's gonna be tough, but uh, they'll be in the mix. They're getting, they're getting better out here. All right. So what is what is the predict twin for the 3A for the final four? 3A final four: uh, Castile Colts, ALA, Northwest Christian, Push Ridge, and uh... man, this is uh, we got a healthy drive back, huh?